it's an old adage, you know, doors open, doors close, windows open, windows close. The new lineup is pretty damn exciting. Uh, we got Neil Team in on guitar, and he is, I, I was a little uncertain about him at first, and he knows that. Mike, Mike told me that. Um, it's because of my background, he didn't know. I, I've never done anything as, as heavy, as fast, as, as technical as Devil Driver. Uh, I've always wanted to, uh, I just never got the chance. Uh, and Mike knew that. And not knowing me, and just knowing, you know, oh, this guy's friends with Dez. Dez has a lot of friends, who knows if they can all play guitar. Neil and I have hung out for some time. I mean, it was a trip how we met. Like, we have a Great Dane, a Harlequin, a Harlequin uh, Great Dane. And my wife's on Instagram, and met another girl named Kira who had a Harlequin uh, Great Dane. And they wanted to get together for, you know, girls get together and, and they bring their husbands along and Neil was the husband. I mean, I've, I've been into metal and heavy music since I was into guitar, really. Being, I'm from Texas, so I was hugely into Pantera. Um, ZZ Top being a little lighter, but still, you know, Texas titans of music, you know. Uh, and then later I get into Black Sabbath and the Ozzy solo shit. I don't know how a guy that, that grows up in Texas uh, playing you know, metal in his room and listening to, to, to metal bands goes, gets into uh, commercial music, but it's probably that he's smart. So, you know, he's an incredible player and opportunities came along for him to do other things. So yeah, he has done some incredible things. I mean, the guy has been, you know, on TV shows that I mean, I know for a fact Devil Driver will never probably do. Ever since then, I really wanted to do it. I knew I wanted to play guitar, but uh, the career opportunities offered to me were never metal until now. It was always, uh, it was, you know, pop this or, you know, this writing or this session stuff. Uh, never a, I mean, I've, I've done touring, I've done, I've kind of done it all, fortunately, in my, my career so far, except. Uh, you know, a world-class metal band, and it's, but that's what I've always wanted. It's taken it this far to come, come all back around to, you know, what I wanted when I was 12. And I instantly had respect for Neil because he kind of has this thing that I think a lot of metal dudes, as time goes on, you think, man, you know, I've been doing this a while, like I would love to get that pop gig, you know what I mean? But he started out with that pop gig wanting to play metal his whole life, and I really respect that because that's, in, a, in somewhat of a sense, kind of going back down if you're looking at it that way, but the heart, you know, speaks the truth and, and he follows it, so I instantly had love for him, I mean, before I even met him. So, and then meeting him and he's so solid, such a sick dude, um, it was just, it was killer. Uh, Des brought him over to my studio and he, you know, I told him to play Dead to Rights, which is one of the harder songs that, uh, to, to play on guitar. And watching Mike, was hilarious, right? Because Neil was like literally playing and like just chewing gum, like looking at him and just playing the song. And he spoke and he's playing it perfectly. And right when it hit is when Mike Solo comes in. He's supposed to just stop, drop out, and just play the rest of the song. He just played Mike Solo too. Just like just like chewing gum, you know? And I look at Mike's face and Mike was just, okay. And he nailed it. I mean a lot of even the things that I didn't think he would be able to figure out you know, because there's a lot of different ways to play certain things in that song. You know, he played it exactly like uh, me or Jeff would play it. And then Mike just sitting back and oh, I'm impressed, that's cool. It's cool, it's gonna work out. I was sold, that was it. And then we started writing together and right off the bat, he's just, he's got this amazing ear and uh, you know, in the studio, we kept on calling him Alfred Pitchcock because it's just, he just notices things that no one else does. Straight into the studio writing with Mike for me once I, once I got the call that I got it for sure. I really was impressed with what a pro he was and how much of a real musician he was. You know, a lot of times, you know, a lot of guys in metal, you know, even though maybe great musicians aren't um, accomplished or, you know, kind of studied like he is. He has an amazing ear and just a total pro and has done many records, you know, in the pop world, in the rock world, in the metal world. and. You know, his contributions were just so quick and easy and good that it's, it was just impressive to work with a guy like that that knows what he wants to hear and can do exactly what you want to hear. It's like, hey, play this, play that, and he's just, he's great. He's like a chameleon that, that's just great at everything he does. Doors open, doors close, windows open, windows close, doors open, windows open, all this other shit, you know. Doors close, windows open. 
windows closed, doors open. I mean, however you want to put it, you know. <laughs>